Okay, this sermon is entitled, Holy Spirit Filled. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 1, it reads, My son, keep my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Now the Bible has a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells the believer at the moment they get saved, and we see this in John chapter number 7. John chapter 7, let's take a look at a couple verses here. Let's start off with verse 36, and we'll stop at verse 40, and it reads, What manner of saying is this, that he said, Ye shall seek, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, we, we understand salvation as having a, an eternal thirst satisfied. And that's why Jesus Christ likens salvation unto, unto eternal water, living water. Okay, and then it goes on to say in verse 38, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, it reads, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So at the moment a person believes on Jesus Christ, they permanently receive the Holy Ghost. And after we receive the Holy Ghost, we are called to be filled with the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost. Now let's take a look at some verses that talk about why this is so important. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's take a look at some of the latter verses here. Where we're comparing, you know, spiritual with uh, natural things. And one of the reasons why we should be filled with the Holy Spirit is because we will have discernment. So many people out there are not even saved at all. And that's why they, they come to the wrong conclusion about things. And then sadly there are, there are believers out there that are totally wrong on certain things as well. And the reason why is because... They don't, they're not getting filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not letting the Holy Spirit you know, guide them and lead them into the truth. And it says in verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now the Holy Spirit is our instructor. Let's take a look at some verses that talk about that. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We see in a couple verses here. It says in verse 25, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. See, Holy Spirit is our instructor because Jesus Christ is no longer here to give us instructions like he was back then. So the Holy Spirit basically kind of supersedes his position in instructing us. And that's why it's important that we get filled up with the Holy Spirit. Now, how do we get filled up with the Holy Spirit? Let's take a look at some verses that talk about people that are filled, filled up with the Holy Spirit. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Now, first I'd like to go into one of the benefits of this. Number one, you can't preach, okay, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And and you won't have any power in what you're saying. You can't explain the gospel, okay? We see an example of this in Acts chapter 1. Let's start off with verse uh, 5. It reads, For truly John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom, the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now this language here, it says that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's like being anointed, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, in salvation, he comes within us. He comes to live inside of us. Okay, but now these people were filled with the Holy Ghost, and as a result of this, they can be witnesses to all these different areas. Now, turn over to Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter 5, we see 
the result of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says in verse 18, it reads, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, in verse 19, we see a list of of the attributes of a, of a Holy Spirit-filled person. It says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A person that's Holy Spirit-filled will probably just naturally praise God or naturally preach a sermon or witness, and they'll give God thanks. Okay, that's, these are attributes of somebody that's Holy Spirit filled. Now, let's go, turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let's take a look at some of the fruit of the Spirit. Let's take a look at all the fruit of the Spirit, actually. It says in verse 22, it says, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that as believers in Christ, we have a choice to either go, live after the, the world or live after the Spirit. As believers in Christ, we should want to live after the Spirit. That's why we have an exhortation in verse 25. If ye live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, Everyone who is saved, it, positionally, you live inside the Spirit, and the Spirit lives inside of you. But now we have the option of walking in the Spirit. Now, there are lots of questions about this. What, is, what does a person have to do to be filled up with the Holy Spirit? Well, it boils down to this. Okay, it boils down to whether you're going to read the Bible or not, basically. Confe- you know, use 1 John 1, 9, and then just start reading God's Word. That's basically what it boils down to. See an example of this in Colossians chapter 3, where we're, re- we're being like instructed to get God's Word inside of us. Start learning it. Start memorizing it. Start reading it. It says in verse 16, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So what is he telling us here that we should be doing? Number one, we should be reading God's word. And it shouldn't stop there. That's why he goes on to say, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, of course, it starts with reading the Bible. Then, Then God wants us to go out and do all these other things. And this is all proof that a person is filled with the Holy Spirit. The thing about this is, is that people can get filled up with the Holy Spirit pretty much any time they want to, if they decide they want to read the Bible and to do what it says. Now, why is Bible reading so important? Let's take a look at one more verse that explains why. Because you have to understand that the Word of God, the Bible describes it as, as quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible describes the Word of God as spiritual. It says in in John chapter 6, verse 63, it reads, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. See that? It talks about the Holy Spirit that actually gives us new birth. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's kind of like if you're putting a bunch of God's Word into you, so to speak, you're, you're filling yourself up with spiritual words. You're filling yourself up with the Spirit. So that's why it's so crucial that we continue to read the Bible over and over and over again on a daily basis, and then we start doing what it says, and the Holy Spirit will take over, and we'll just naturally want to praise God, as we've already read. And then we can go witnessing, we can preach, we can do spiritual things. That actually matter. The things of this world do not matter. And we have basically a a dichotomy of two different you know, degrees of, of things that, that either matter or don't. It's called gold, silver, and precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. So the things that we do that are spiritual, they're going to get get us rewards in heaven that actually matter. Okay, You get somebody saved, it means they're going to heaven forever. And that's something that matters. I've heard it best put, if you if you catch somebody a fish, they can have one meal. If you teach somebody how to fish... They can have meals for the rest of their life. They can continue to fish, continue to get food. So we need to be focused on things that matter and and things that are spiritual. And you can't do so unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.